And for example, Lagna is always Swabala. Second is Bhoga. So Lagna Swabala means your own strength, your own abilities, your own skills. All right. And guess what the trines are? Jnana, your Jnana, your knowledge. The ninth, your Guru. So where, what did you get from the ninth house? When you got a skill from the ninth house, you had to be taught it by a Guru. Whereas the fifth, you already had that knowledge in you. Nobody needed to teach you. You can learn it on your own. And the Lagna can make you strong enough to pursue something to master, but you don't know actually. All right? Second is bhoga, and um, I usually don't use it for bhoga, but it, you, it shows what it is you want to consume, all right? And, and this is not only food, <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> One thing I, I wanted to ask here uh, regarding the trines, because then we can go to other houses, like you said, if it is in the ninth, suppose, suppose somebody has Venus or I mean any Mars or any planet, then you are saying to learn that trait, you need to go to a guru. Yes. If let's say you have Mars in ninth and you want to be good at martial arts, you should learn it from a teacher. Okay. And if, if it is you have Venus in ninth and you want to be a painter, you have to learn it from a teacher if it's in ninth. Yes. Okay. And if you it can is the person how to study, how to master the skill. Fifth, then they can learn it by themselves. Fifth, they probably already have it from the past life. They just have to open the book and the whole memory will come. Okay, and if it is in Lagna, uh, then the person... Then, then it's really learning by themselves. Yes, and they actually can learn it on their own. Because they don't actually know it. They have to open and read and study on their own. Okay. Yes. Fifth, you need a small trigger and the memory comes. Okay. Yeah. It's there already, fifth house. Yes. Okay, now the second house, it's a tricky house. It's a very, very tricky house um, because it, it, shows, it says Boga here. And I was told to, to write Boga uh, when I was learning this, but I was also told it can show Shad Karma. And I use it for that. It's really more useful for that. Which of the karmas you are performing is seen from here. In fact, I was taught an even better word for this, Niti. The four nitis, okay, they are, uh, what is it, uh, dhamma, dana, danda, bheda. Sam, okay. danda, yes, correct. They work even better from here, ninth, second house in Namamsha. And so if you have benefics, you're doing good karma to people. If you have malefics, you're doing bad karma to people in second house. Right? So this is where you're encouraged to do something. Why? Because La Navamsha Lagna is like ninth house. Second, therefore, is, is like tenth house. This is where you're actually doing something. If this is ninth house, then twelfth therefore is like eighth house. This is where you die. Okay, fantastic. Yes. Okay. So that means fifth is like Lagna. Ah. Oh, wow. Yes. There we go. So now it makes sense. There's a lot of, you know, this is, this is where we get the whole thing from. All right? The third they're from, Upadesha and advice. This is Guru Upadesha. You should follow this advice. If you don't follow this advice, you will be nagged. You will be troubled. These people will try to push you and really force you in a direction. Okay? So the, you, usually you have a bad relation with peop, the people indicated by planets in the third house. Okay? Okay. Especially while growing up. After you become all wiser and older, then you have a good relation with these people in the third house. Okay, so, so always they're nagging, has, telling you do this, do that, do this, do that, keep doing this. You know, suppose somebody has any planet like Venus there, for example. So then, oh my goodness, sisters, cousins, sisters, girls in their class, okay. terrible relationship. Okay. All right, okay. And uh, uh, this is what I test. I also test it. I ask them, how is your relationship with this person? If they say good, and I said, ah, you started listening to them. It's a good thing. Okay, you have to start listening to them, then your relationship will improve. Yes, exactly. Wow. Fourth house, I told you, this one's a tough house, right? Raksha. Actually, the word is Raka. Like in Iraqi, you know, something you tie? Iraqi is what, something you tie to, uh, as to symbolize your, your, you're going to protect your sister or protect another woman, right? And you do that. The opposite of Raka or Raki is Kharat. That's Kara's army. 
Okay, the rakhi is used for raksha to protect. Kara is the one who reverses that protection, and he sits in the fourth house testing. How is your purity? How is your purity? How is your purity? Any impurity, he sends his army. Okay, and that's when the malefics are there in the fourth. You want benefics here in the fourth. You will have a lovely life in fourth house benefics. Fourth house, you need that. You need that. If they're malefics, then you start wanting to build walls around your life. Fifth house. Knowledge, we dealt with that. Sixth house, kashta, pain. I was taught visti, you should put danda here and you should put hara over here in the 11th house. These two are working together. All right, there's a Jamini Sutra. It says, tano, tana, danda, hara. So this is these two houses which are working together. All right, and they're not very nice houses, not at all. Not at all. Um, sixth house, no matter what you have here, it will cause you pain. 11th house, if they're malefics, all right? Sixth house can be good if they're benefics, but it's not so easy still. It's still not easy. Seventh so house, so Vibaha. So right? suppose somebody has a malefic in the sixth house, yeah. Navamsha, and even in the Lagna, if it is in a good house for finances, like the 10th house. You mean in Rashi chart, yes. Yes. So, so then, so I'm going to explain that in a minute where I'm going to show how good yogas can be in bad houses in Avamsha. We'll, we'll talk about exactly that, the mix. In the seventh days Vibaha, in, in, keep in mind that it's Kama Ayana. So it also relates to everything that you desire. All right? So not just spouse. Uh, eighth house is debt, Rina. Many times people who have planets here in eighth house in Avamsha develop addictions. Okay? Um, ninth house we've talked about. Tenth house, Vishwa Karma. All right, Vishwa Karma. All karma. This is very important also for wealth in Tenth in Navamsha. Actually, your bank account, how much wealth you have, the status you have will be decided here. All right, this is the final decider. Eleventh, we've talked about. Twelfth is Moksha, freedom, and also death. All right. Okay. Um, Babajit, let's try this. Let's say somebody says they're a doctor. And doctors are indicated by moon or mercury, most prominently the moon. Mercury is the doctor, but moon is the healer. All right? And moon is in the eighth house. Okay. What's happening? Okay? This is the doctor who goes to the medical cabinet to self-medicate. Goes to self-medicate? Yes. They're taking painkillers. Okay. Getting addicted to painkillers on the job. Oh my God. Yes. What happens if moon is in the 12th house? Now moon can also be a singer, right? Yes, I mentioned yes, that. Yes, yes, What yes. if moon is in the 12th house and the person says they're a singer? Okay. I think there's this club, tw age 27, right? Right? No, no idea about it. If there's this, they say there's a, there, there's a commonality by that many musicians, they, uh, they commit suicide or die at age 27. Many do. Okay, when you see young musicians die, that means it's a 12th house moon. So because why, but, but the Lagna chart is telling that he will be a singer, and if in Navamsha it is in 12th, then this can happen. Yes. Okay, but here I have to ask you one question. <laughs> the same singer with moon in 8th, addiction. All right? Oh my God. So you are saying that if we try to activate the planets which are in the 8th, then that can give us addictions? Yeah. Wow. But here I would like to ask you one question. Like you said for the singer, if it is in 12th. <laughs> but uh, if he's a singer, then Moon should have some association with the trine. So how would you just... Ah, so that? here's the thing. Yeah. If you are having planets in 12th in Navamsha, it causes, because of Shubha Yoga on the Lagna, a strange ability. All right? And this strange ability is that when you do that activity, it's as if you're connecting to God. Because this 12th house is the, where you are connecting to God. It's your only connection to God in the Navamsha. All right? Because this is where the vacuum is open. The door is open. Whoa. The Shunya starts. Okay? This is the Shraddha time. 12th house is Shraddha time. During Shraddha, 40 days, the door is open to God. Okay? So if a person has a planet in 12th house, when they activate it, it's as if they're connecting to God and people think their work is divine. 
So if Moon is in 12th house, you often see singers whom when they sing, it's as if it touches people's hearts much more. Wow. Okay, this is a peculiar thing. So planets in 12th can also give abilities. I'm supposed to say, second can also give abilities. Third can also give abilities. Sixth can also give abilities. So there are houses which can give abilities, but they're not knowledge-based. All right. So, so instead of me telling you, oh, no, no, only look at trines for your profession. I see, I didn't do that, right? I said, look at the Rashi chart really to know what's going on in profession or any work or karma they're doing. And then we'll go to the Navamsha and see what is actually happening as a result. The problem is, if you're a singer with Moon in 12th and Navamsha, every time you open your mouth and sing, you're coming closer and closer to God. And what does that mean? One day you will die because of that. Yeah. And uh, this 8th house I want to ask, there's a lot of fear about the Navamsha's 8th house. Is there some separate slide where you will uh, explain this or is it only there in this slide? I don't know why there's that fear. Because they say like that it breaks marriage or I get questions from people. That's true. Say, that's true. But that's because it sustains the marriage. It's the second from the 7th house, right? That's so that's only for first marriage. Second marriage is in second house. So second there from will break the second marriage, right? Okay. Now, yeah. regarding this 10th house, you said it holds all the key to the bank accounts. <laughs> so suppose there's some planet there, but in the Lagna, it is not associated with any strong house or any prominent house or 10th house or Lagna. So then what do you say? And if that Dasha yeah. is not coming, it will not be activated or how do you see this? Um... See, this is the where we get into this topic where the Rashi chart does not clearly indicate something. Like I've so seen many people, they go and they compare Rashi charts of, okay, we'll take 10 engineers, put them next to each other. How come they're engineers? Nothing is the same in the Rashi chart, right? All right. You're, you're hinting at that. But in their Navamshas, they will most likely have Mars having a good yoga with the 10th house. If they're wealthy engineers. All right. Um, engineer is still a problem uh, to use that term because engineers implies a profession but doesn't mean you are working in an engineering company, right? Right. Let's say somebody has a restaurant chain, a chain of restaurants, and they earn from food. So that means Moon must be having a very positive association with 10,000 in the Okay. You can still be educated as an engineer and sell food, right? So. The 10,000 in Avamsha is telling us where is the wealth coming from? The real wealth, the, the wealth which is real wealth. When I say wealth, it means not salary. Yes. Okay? Like you can have a salary and then you put your money in property and you're actually earning from property. All right. So that's, that's, like the, that's where your money will increase or that's like the exactly. most prominent. Exactly. So what I do is I check the 10th in Avamsha and I'm interested in very little information. Is there an exalted planet or own sign planet in the 10th and Navamsha? Is the Lord of this 10th and Navamsha exalted or in own sign? If it is, the person will be very, very wealthy. Oh, that's if the it is not, not so much. Okay? Real wealth. The thing is, however, you can have some people who are very rich, but they are not having much wealth. This is because there's this category of, of wealthy people nowadays whom have a, have, the, have a lot of um, value, high value, because of their work, and because of that, they can take big loans. You understand? And so these, some of these don't have a lot of wealth of their own, but they have a lot of loans because of their prosperity, because of their work. Like Facebook. Facebook is, a, is not really indicating rich people. Those who work in Facebook do not, are not actually rich but they are, they are valuable on paper. And because they're valuable on paper, the bank will give them a high amount of, uh, of uh, flexibility. So that is not actually asset wealth. That is not earned wealth. You did not bring the money and put it in an account and save it, and then you bought some property. That's not what happened. You loaned. And then because of your, your job, you can keep loaning more and more. And in essence, you're in, actually in, you are wealthy in debt, actually, in such cases. So this is this tent will not show wealth and debt. This is real, real old-fashioned 
money in the property, money in, in, in uh, uh, vehicles, money and all that stuff. Well, this is real man. So okay. Even if there is a malefic which is exalted or it's in own sign, then also that will make you well. Yes. Then you need to also use that as your source of wealth. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I think we can do the next in the next session. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much and stay tuned.